students and the like. Uh, but at, at, at this, all during the 20 years, I'm approaching deans and, um, uh, I never got to get hired as president, but uh, anybody who might want to fund a faculty position, which is not easy to get, to get done. I mean, you have a faculty, you have a, you have a budget for a faculty, and in time you ask for another person. That's a very serious consideration for everyone. So that was one of the major problems. The one but it was probably more important than that one, and more serious than that, was uh, the attitude of my faculty, uh, my, my colleagues, mm. toward teaching this music uh, vocally. The vast majority of them did not believe that that was possible. Well, they didn't believe that instrumentally it was, 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 uh, it was possible to do it instrumentally also, because they didn't understand the concept of, of, of uh, interpreting music without it being written, mm -hmm. or without it being written exactly the way the composer wanted. So that was a problem. But after um, several attempts, we had two or three uh, people who came uh, to work, as you turned out to, to be a fabulous uh, appointment, but we had two or three to uh, be in that position, and uh, uh, that didn't work out for a lot of reasons. I feel <clears throat> that your appointment was my last chance with this school administration. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like, you know, you bugged us for 20 years, so this one better work. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> so we told this blind faith. Uh, and then when I think about the, the, this, the, the, the process of bringing you on, even the, the things that we had to go through at the very end of, to make that appointment, it was done at the end of the school year, mm -hmm. it was done at a time that you were, you know, you had to make a decision about your life, yeah. and this was going to be a big move for you, and I was very self-conscious about that. Now, uh, with the other people that we had, uh, uh, Kirk Smoot was one. He, uh, do you know Kirk? Do, does that name sound familiar? What's the name? Kirk. Kirk Stewart. Mm -mm. Kirk Stewart was a pianist who was on the faculty here, but he was on the faculty as an assistant in the marching band. He was from Texas Southern. Mm -hmm. No, do, do some 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 some, some uh, research on him, but he was on the faculty at Texas Southern uh, as a uh, 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 not assistant, but he wrote for the band. And uh, I think he was a, either a, a baton twirl or something like that with the, with the, with the Texas Southern. Quite talented. He played with Saravon for a good while. There's a, 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 I direct you to a, a, a YouTube recording of him uh, accompanying Sarah on uh, Misty. Mm -hmm. And I think he sings the bridge. <laughs> just the fact that he's going to sing the bridge with, uh, got to show you his But he was here, uh, and he, for the first time, uh, uh, we thought this, this was possible. This came uh, uh, about my 10th year. He mm. came about my 10th year. And that was uh, the, the uh, had you come along with my 10th year, how far ahead we would have been by then. Mm. But he, um, he, he was really sacrificing to, to work here because he wouldn't let him to go to Vegas to play with Joe, 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 uh, Joe, uh, Joe Williams, Joe Williams. And uh, he was at that, uh, that magnitude. And he was also a uh, very, very fine uh, thumbnail, like uh, uh, many others that, that we had to come to. So uh, we had several Opportunities. What, didn't Webster Lewis bring a program? Webster yeah. Lewis was the second one, right? That we were going to, I was going to mention, right? And he came about my fifteenth year. Mm -hmm. As I said, my, my my opportunities for getting someone, and, and all these could have probably done a a, a decent job. Uh, I had absolutely no idea uh, that. Uh, uh, this whole vocal thing would turn out the way you made it turn out. <laughs> so, but I did dream it though. I dreamed that, and all these people that I was not satisfied with, 
and wanted to give them a chance. I did dream that they would turn out like the way you said turned out. Mm. But then, you know, and these these were all people who were uh, already established as, as accompanists and coaching voice coaches with, with, with professional singers. And I think that had had a lot to do with it. That, but uh, we, you know, we eventually got the. Um, We found out about you, Fred, and I through Ron McCurdy. And uh, this, I'm, I'm going to say that this a lot of times about this blind faith and this divine intervention and the like. And maybe the Lord knew that I was my last, just my last chance to feel this. <laughs> so you were approached by Ron McCurdy. Oh, tell us about that. How was that? He, he did mention it to me. Um, I remember it was at the um, Jazz Educators IJ. Conference in, I think it was in New Orleans. Um, I think it was West, West Coast, so like, because Fred was there. I, I wasn't there. Yeah, it, it was. It may have been New Orleans. It may I have been. I'm I think that's when Ron okay. first mentioned it to me. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just at that time I was actually looking to come back to the U.S. Uh -huh. And I was kind of putting the word out at the Jazz Educators Conference, saying, I'm looking to come back to the U.S., so if you hear of anything, keep me in mind. Mm -hmm. And um, so Ron mentioned to me, he said, the you know, people at Howard, you know, are, are interested in you. He said, I told them about you. And that, you know, was kind of, he said, I think somebody's going to be in touch. And so meanwhile, I, I ended up in California during, I was, that was during my Christmas break. Mm -hmm. I was here right. in the U.S. from Australia. Mm -hmm. And I was staying with a friend out in California, and his wife said to me, there's a vocal jazz position open at Cypress Community College. So uh, my friend Alan, he took me by there. Who is Cypress? It's, um, it's eight miles straight up from Huntington Beach. That's how I oh, know okay. it. That's when I was out there, I lived in Huntington Beach. Okay. And I just drove eight miles just uh, uh, due east. Mm -hmm. And uh, but anyway, uh, so it's very close to, to L.A. And um, anyway, I, I went out there and I had a little look around. And then later that evening, I called and spoke to the department chair and, and told him I was interested. And I put in an application and whatever else. And then I flew back to Australia. Mm -hmm. Well, while I was there, I got um, an email, I think, from... Someone here it might have been Fred. It was probably Fred because Fred knew you before I did. I didn't know who you were. All I know is when he found you, he said, "You gonna take this person?" Out. And and the thing that that um, I didn't pursue the job here at Howard because there was no official job announcement. Right. And we had <laughs> we had been warned about that. Absolutely, when that's was, a good thing. Too. When I was in graduate school, when I was doing my working on my post my postgraduate work, Gene Aiken told us. He said, "You be careful of these word of mouth." Absolutely. He said, "If you don't see a job that's actually advertised, you know," he said, "you need to see an announcement somewhere." And if you don't, he said, "then chances are, you know." nothing will come of it. Totally. So good. I kept looking, you know, I was looking on the Chronicle, the Howard website, and there was nothing. And so, uh, meanwhile, the people from California, they, you know, um, sent out some feelers, and they set up an interview, and I did a phone interview, and then they set up a, um, oh, what was it? They set up a, a personal interview. So I actually flew there. It was during my break. Um, I had a two-week break coming up in Australia, and I flew to California. I did a presentation there, taught some classes, met with their president, and they offered me a job mm -hmm. right away. So um, I hesitated, and... Um, what, what month is this now? What, this what? was in April. Okay. And they said... This is the year before you came here, right? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. And I'm, so I'm... Um, they said that um, we you can have till Tuesday. This was on a Friday. They said, okay, now till Tuesday to give us your answer. Meanwhile, I'm still checking <laughs> that Howard website <laughs> and the um, and the Chronicle, and I actually even sent an email to the department chair to ask about mm -hmm. the position. I didn't get any response. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday came around, I accepted the job in California, 
And so I went back to Australia and closed out things there, and then I moved back to the, to the U.S. as I was in California. The reason why, now, I have, since this is my project and my tape, and I can, I can expunge whatever I, I like to take off. <laughs> <laughs> I say what I want to say on this. But the reason why, and you know the reason why there was no announcement, the announcement goes out. There was an announcement for this job once we hired you. Okay. There was no doubt. And that was because, uh, and then and there were 25 uh, people interested, applicants. But uh, unfortunately, you know, to, to protect ourselves from the, the, the lights, the, the uh, employment uh, laws, uh, uh, I, you don't do this in, 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 in your position here now, so I'm, I'm speaking for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, we find the person we want, make sure this person wants to come here, and then we send an announcement out. Ah, I see. Okay. Which is, we're not the only one to do that, but, uh, but that's it. So you didn't see the announcement because I, I hadn't found the person I, I wanted. Mm -hmm. And once I found the person I wanted, and, and here is where the... Uh, the process and the, and the procedure beginning to, to work itself out, uh, it was just that this is the person you want. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is really, now, had you not, again, I'm being redundant, had you not worked out, because I would have been in pretty bad shape. No, what would, what would have happened was this this faculty and this administration would say, well, you know, we, we're kind of tired of this vocal thing, so... Don't come back to us with any vocal for shit. <laughs> so, that's probably what. That wouldn't have bothered me because I would have come back again like I did over the 20 year period. So, uh, but the reason why you didn't find and that's, that's a, that kind of puts you in a kind of a difficult situation. And I don't blame you. I wouldn't apply for a position that, that's not announced either. But it was announced. And when you came here for your interview, you came here along with another 10. In my way out of this place, asleep.